We're back and taking your questions now for Dr. Zorba Pastor. The number is 270-9933, and we will go to the phones. We'll start with Marie in Broadhead. Hi, Marie. Uh, hi. Uh, I'm wondering, is there any other test that they can take besides them sticking that thing up your nose? No, this thing has to go into your nose. That is the only way it actually can be taken because you've got to go way in the back of the nose to that part of the throat where the virus actually lives. So it's not like a throat culture where you go through the mouth, but yes, it is uncomfortable, but it's the only way to get an accurate sample. Well, that Susan, is correct. Susan and I were both tested, and it wasn't that bad. I didn't think so either, although, but I've heard... It's, it's not that bad. No, it really isn't, but uh, I, some people have you at the Alliance Center, they, they do it for you. Some, at some places, they have you do it yourself. And I would think that might be a little trickier, isn't it, Zorba? I think it should be done professionally because then you'll get to the right spot. Mm -hmm. I think doing yourself actually can give you false negatives. I think somebody actually has to do it in. It has to twirl about 10 times in order to be able to pick up the virus. You want an accurate measurement, and it's just like nobody likes to have a shot. Nobody likes to have uh, anything stuck into their nose. Mm -hmm. And the antibody test, that's a blood test. That is a blood test. And a lot of people don't like to have a blood test. And by the way, if you're one of the people who may faint when you have a blood test, and it's about 5 to 10% uh, to of the population, lay down. If you lay down, if you tell the person taking the blood, I'm a fainter, and you lay down and have your blood taken, and you then you wait there for three to five minutes, you will not feel faint. 95% of the time, you won't feel faint. And then for many people, they will get over their fear of getting a blood test. Because once you faint or feel like you're fainting, getting a blood test, it's very uncomfortable. Lay down when you're having your blood test if you are a fainter. And that's especially important for 20-year-old guys who never say it <laughs> and sometimes collapse in our office, let me tell you. There have been six foot five guys, really heavy football players who have gone <laughs> down for the count. Just don't, just don't look. Yeah, I mean, that, right, that, that, that helps, helps too. All right, let's go to Maggie in Wanakee. Hi, Maggie, what's your question? I wanna know how long the virus uh, survives on like countertops and bags from the grocery store and items you bring from the grocery store. And also Dr. Fauci, said you should wear eye coverings when you're outside does will glasses survive <laughs> Well, there, there are a couple of things going on. First of all, social distancing is number one, number two, and number three, staying six feet away. Second of all, surfaces appear to be less important than we originally thought. Remember, this is science and evolution. We thought they were important, but wiping them down is really important. How long does it last? We think it may last up to two days. We're not exactly sure, but that is at least the, uh, the present recommendation. <clears throat> as well as eye coverings, they're better for healthcare professionals. They might even be better for or other people such as salon workers, but look at the study we just talked about. They didn't wear any eye coverings, and yet nobody in that study was infected that shows that the mask really makes a difference. And making sure everyone in our state wears a mask is important. Right now in Illinois, they say if, if somebody from Chicago goes up to the Dells, they have to quarantine for two weeks. When they go back, what's that gonna do for the business in the Dells? Not a great idea. We should all wear masks. All right, let's go to Barry in Madison. Hi, Barry, what's your question? Yeah, can you catch um, uh, coronavirus 19 from secondhand smoke like we do from coughing and sneezing? No, it's really coughing and sneezing. It's the droplets in your throat that counts. It's not, it's not secondhand smoke. You can die from secondhand smoke because you may die from it, but you're not gonna get COVID. Okay, let's go to Sharon in Stoughton. Hi, Sharon, what's your question? I have a question is, I have a family wedding coming up and it's in Minnesota, but my family lives here in Wisconsin. And if they go to the wedding in Minnesota and they don't wear a mask, none of them do, but they come back to Wisconsin where they live, how long does the virus show affect, affecting the people who went to the wedding that did not wear a mask? Well, first of all, if somebody has COVID at the wedding and somebody comes into contact with them, they can get that they can get COVID anytime within a 14-day period. So if you follow it correctly, you're going to quarantine for 14 days. And second of all, if they're actually thinking of going up to the wedding and they're not going to socially distance and they're not going to wear a mask, why are they going to the wedding? Why would they want to bring back death to somebody who might be older than them when they return to Wisconsin? Is it really 
worth it? Is it the right patriotic citizen thing to do? No, if you're going to go to the wedding, make sure that there are a few number of people, socially distance, and wear a mask. Wear a mask. Do it the right way. All right. Gary in Madison. Hi, yeah. Gary. What's your question? Uh, my question is, I just uh, came from Nasita area, and um, everybody who was at the campsite, nobody was even thinking of wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like, what can you do? Because mm -hmm. if you uh, ask people to wear a mask, they look at you like uh, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Well, that's 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 really that's really a problem. But you know what? It was a problem with smoking. Who would have ever thought in Wisconsin that we wouldn't have smoking in bars and taverns? But yet society changed, and now we don't have smoking. People used to say it's my right to light up a cigarette in a restaurant. It's my right to light up a cigarette in a bar. And now we accept that it's not their right. It's their right to go outside and smoke. In a likewise fashion, everyone has to buck up and wear a mask. And if you're around an area where people are not wearing masks don't go inside that building because you might get COVID and you might get sick or you might bring it to somebody else and they might die and you don't want to do that right. you want to be smart and if you're outside and you're closer than six feet have a mask on that's exactly and if you're farther than six feet and it's outside the risk is very 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 minimal right all right we're out of time for now thank you for calling everyone lots of great questions oh, again yeah. thank Zorba. you for your time Zorba we really appreciate it we'll do this again very my soon my pleasure we have our mask right here yes we do <laughs> we'll have a final check your forecast coming up